Now that we've addressed the question of setting up a coordinate system and of dynamics given a particular coordinate system, we come to another interesting question, which is how do different observers correlate their observations of dynamics? So how do different observers uh, compare their observations? Because after all, every observer is free to choose for their spatial coordinates. Every observer is free to choose an origin a set of reference axes and uh, their unit length or standard length okay, or meter stick. And for their time coordinates, every observer is free again to choose an origin and uh, a reference time interval. Okay. Now, intuitively, we expect that differences in these choices, the choice of origin, the choice of set of axes, the choice of unit length, or the choice of origin reference time interval, these choices should not matter in our description of the physical world. Okay. And indeed, this is true for a set of observers whom we think of as inertial observers, that is observers who are in a state of uniform motion relative to each other. Okay, so first let's take a simple class of observers. Let's take two observers who are at rest with respect to each other. But let's just imagine that the only difference between these observers is that they choose an identical time origin, that is they have the same clocks and they start them at the same times, they have the same reference time interval, they have the same set of spatial axes, they have the same unit length, but let's take two observers who differ in the choice of origin of their spatial axis. And let's ask if for these two observers, uh, the uh, how do they describe the world and how do they relate of their different observations to each other. So let's take one observer here with origin O and coordinates X and Y. I'll just take two dimensions for simplicity. And let's take another observer who chooses to set their coordinate system in such a way that they are displaced from this origin by an amount a. Okay, so their origin is over here, and their x axis is, let's say, it has the same orientation. And their y axis has the same orientation. And they also have the same meter sticks. So this is one meter, and this observer also has same one meter meter stick. Okay, and now they want to describe the position of a particular particle. So they want to describe position of this particle, let's say, over here. So what would observer one do? Observer 1 would say that with respect to my origin, this is the vector that describes the coordinate of this particle. So let me also define these observers. So let's call this observer 1. And let me define this as observer 2. 
and observer 2 would draw a different vector and say this is the vector that I'm going to use to describe the position of this particle. Now both observers are describing the same particle. Okay. And the other thing is they're also, uh, they have clocks which they've agreed on the origin of time and they've agreed on their interval of time. So we would also say that both observers are measuring this position of the particle at the same instant of time. Okay, so in observer one's language, this red T describes their time that they measure. Oops. And for observer two's language, uh, this blue T describes the time that they measure, and these are the same. So for clarity, I'll denote observer two's observations with a prime. So I will put a prime on this. Okay, and the time interval. Uh, measured by uh, the time coordinate of this particle's position is t prime. The time coordinate of uh, this particle's position according to observer 1 is t and those two times uh, are the same. The, the numerical values are the same. Uh, however, they disagree on the position of the particle or at least their description of the position of the particle. They both agree that the particle is there they just have different ways to describe, describe what their means. So according to observer one, the particle has a coordinate, which I will describe by the vector x bar, which is this pink line over here. And according to observer two, the coordinates are described by an observation x prime bar. So to relate their observations, we need a dictionary. Okay, the dictionary tells us how to relate this quantity x to the quantity x prime. Okay, between x and x prime but also t and t prime. In this case, the relationship between t and t prime was simple, but that is still part of the dictionary, okay? So how do we make this, uh, this, relation, uh, this uh, correspondence between x and x prime? Well, it's easy to see, okay? So if we go to observer one's coordinate system, then they would say that there is a vector which I will denote as the vector a vector, which has magnitude a, which describes the displacement of observer two's origin with respect to my origin. That's what observer one would say. And therefore, by simple laws of vector addition, they would say that therefore the vector x bar would just be the vector sum going from here to here. So in other words, it would be the same as a bar, which is let me go this way and then let me go this way. So it would be this amount, okay? Um, So this is the dictionary, okay? It's a very simple dictionary. It basically says that the vector x as described by observer one is related to the vector x prime as described by observer two by a simple shift of the vector by a constant vector a bar. So a bar doesn't change with time. This observe, the important point is a bar does not change with time because we're assuming that observer two is at rest with respect to observer one. So for any instant of time now, we can write down this relationship and we can say that the dictionary at any instant of time, so this dictionary is always valid,
is given by t prime is t and or let me write it the other way t is the same as t prime both observers measure at the same time and the observer x measures a position which is related to the position measured by the observer 2 by a constant shift okay so here a bar is independent of time which means that this since this dictionary is valid for all times it should be true that if the position of the particle changes so it's now at a position x bar at some time t in the future in the old observer's coordinate system it would be at x bar at time t in the new observer's coordinate system it would be at x bar prime at time t prime t and t prime are the same okay with our dictionary and the relationship between them is still the same x bar of t is x bar prime of t prime plus this constant shift Okay, by a bar. That's easy to see, right? You imagine that this point has moved somewhere else at a future instant of time. Again, it's the same relationship. Uh, if, if it moves to a different position, let's say over here, this would be the new vector x bar at some other instant of time. This would be the new vector x bar prime at that new instant of time. But again, uh, their relationship would be the same. x bar, which is this displacement, would be this, this displacement would be the same as the displacement along this x-axis plus this displacement. So again, x bar would be a bar plus x bar prime. So this dictionary is valid at any instant of time, and it allows you to translate okay allows translation between different observers okay so the dictionary is specific to these two observers and the these observers what defines the relationship between them is the amount of displacement a bar okay if I have a different, a third observer with a different displacement, let's say b bar, then I would have to put that different vector over here. Okay, so this dictionary relates two different observers. So you think of this dictionary as a language dictionary. Okay, so it's a language dictionary. For example, if I'm translating from English to Hindi, we're saying the same thing. Okay, in English you say cow, in Hindi you say guy. Okay, these mean the same thing, but you still have to make the translation. You have to make the correspondence between English and Hindi. Once you establish this correspondence, you can now start talking to each other. Okay, you can see that you're really describing the same thing. You just have different words for it. Okay, that's exactly what's going on over here. You have different words to describe the same particle, the, the position of the same particle. You have different time coordinates. You have different position coordinates. Okay, uh, different observers are using different time coordinates and different position coordinates. If I have a third observer, for example, let's say someone talking in French. Okay, the word for a cow is vache. And so they have a third word for it. Okay, so this would be like relating these two by a vector a. These two are related by a different vector b. Okay, but they're all there is a way of going from one observer to a, uh, a second observer to a third observer and so on. So this kind of change of observers by motion by uh, moving along a particular direction in space is called a spatial translation. Okay, it's a translation just as 
an English to Hindi translation. Different observers are just talking about the world in a different language, but they're describing exactly the same physical things.